computing refers to an on-demand provisioning of IT resources and applications through the Internet. You pay for what you use and how much you use. This is termed as the pay-as-you-go pricing scheme. Whether you run applications to share information or support critical business operations, cloud computing facilitates quick access to cost-efficient and flexible IT resources, accessing servers, databases, storage media, and a variety of application services on the World Wide Web. The providers of cloud computing, such as Amazon Web Services or AWS, possess and maintain the hardware for different services in their own premises and enable you to manage your required hardware through a web interface. This saves you from making hardware investments or spending several months managing the hardware. With cloud computing, you only need to determine the type and size of the required resources to empower your latest business project or idea. For example, you need to determine the number of files to be stored as a backup on the Internet so that you can access or retrieve them at any time and from any web-enabled interface. The idea here is to restore these files if they get corrupted. Cloud computing provides the following six key benefits to a user. First, you do not incur capital expenses you go for variable expense that cuts down the high hardware cost. You only pay when you use the resource instead of investing in servers and data centers, even before using them. Second, you can take the advantage of economics of scale. Investing in cloud resources is like buying electricity from a company. This provides benefits such as pay as per use and reduced costs due to economies of scale. As an increasing number of customers use the service of cloud computing providers, higher economies of scale become inevitable. This becomes evident in the form of lower variable or pay-as-you-go expenses that you incur by subscribing to these cloud services. Plus, several data centers lack space. This forces their owners to expand the existing centers or build new ones. By moving the applications to a provider's infrastructure, there is no need for an expansion. Third, you can optimize the use of resources easily. When you guess your capacity needs for deploying an application, chances are high for you to come up with idle or overloaded resources. These issues go away with cloud computing. Now, you access according to your needs and scale in minutes. Fourth, you can effortlessly boost speed and agility. Making new resources available in a cloud computing environment is to click away. This means that it takes less time for other users to access and use resources. This leads to a dramatic rise in agility as the costs and time for testing and development are now lower. Fifth, it becomes simpler to streamline processes. You can get more work done with a handful of people and in less time. This leads to giving greater attention to customers and other important projects. Sixth, you'll enjoy the freedom of going global in a few minutes. In a cloud computing environment, it takes only a few clicks to deploy your application across several regions across the globe. This ensures lower latency and better customer experience at minimal cost. There are three distinct forms of cloud computing, namely public cloud, private cloud, and hybrid cloud. Depending on the type of data you need, it is essential to comprehend the three cloud types in terms of levels of management and required security. A public cloud is essentially the World Wide Web. A public cloud service provider uses the Internet to create resources, such as storage and applications available to the public. While a third party may own or manage the cloud, it exists on the premises of the service provider. This form may not be ideal for all organizations due to security limitations. A public cloud is ideal for sharing non-secured applications and testing application code. Examples of public clouds include the Windows Azure Services Platform, Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud, or EC2, Sun Cloud, and IBM's Blue Cloud. A private cloud has an architecture similar to a data center. The infrastructure and services of the data center exist on a private network. 
The owner of a private cloud is required to buy and maintain all infrastructure assets. These clouds are only for large enterprises or projects that demand better control and security. A company owns it to ensure provisioning, monitoring, automation, and scalability. While public clouds offer economies of scale, private clouds bring in modest economies of scale and are expensive. A hybrid cloud is a mix of public and private cloud services offered by multiple providers. Through such a cloud, a company is able to retain control over an internally managed private cloud, while depending on the public cloud when required. For example, during peak time, you can migrate a few applications to the public cloud. Such management is also beneficial during forecasted unfavorable events such as a scheduled Windows maintenance and hurricane warnings. The only con here is the need to track the different applications in each cloud to ensure proper communication. Another use of a hybrid cloud is to cater to different market verticals. With the increasing popularity of cloud computing, different models are introduced to fulfill distinct needs of different users. The three models of cloud computing are Infrastructure as a Service, or IAAS, Platform as a Service, or PAAS, and Software as a Service, or SAAS. Each of these models possesses different levels of management, control, and flexibility. It is essential to understand the differences between these models to identify the right set of services and according to your needs. Infrastructure as a Service offers access to networking features, data storage space, and different computers. Also known as Hardware as a Service, it ensures the highest level of control and flexibility for your IT resources. This model is similar to the prevailing IT resources known to several IT developers. Platforms as a Service is responsible for allowing organizations to focus on managing and deploying applications instead of concentrating on managing the core infrastructure composed of operating systems and hardware. This increases the overall efficiency by eliminating the need to bother about software maintenance, capacity planning, resource procurement, and tasks of running an application. Software as a Service refers to end-user applications that are run and managed by service providers. It eliminates the need to think, how to maintain a specific application or service, or how to manage the underlying infrastructure. You only need to focus on how to use the application or software. An example of a Software as a Service application is an online service to send and receive messages without managing feature additions to the application or maintaining the servers on which it is running. Jacques Barzin, an American historian, once said, We gather historical knowledge not to make us cleverer next time, but wiser for all times. So if we take the historian's quote seriously, it becomes all the more important for us to learn and understand the historical background of Amazon Web Services. In other words, that would have led to creating something which is a revolution in the IT industry, and how a budding thought is evolving into a giant tree with roots and branches, spreading and reaching every household on this planet. Amazon Web Services, or AWS, was officially launched in the year 2006. However, the process to create AWS was initiated in 2003 by Chris Pinkham and Benjamin Black during their presentation on Amazon's retail computing infrastructure. They proposed that the infrastructure should be uniform and completely automated. Also, it was envisioned that Amazon would exclusively be dependent on web services for its internal storage requirements and would offer the services related to virtual servers to other organizations. Now let's see the chronological milestone events in the history of AWS. In November 2004, AWS released their first service for public use. It was termed as Simple Q. Their team in Cape Town built Amazon EC2. In 2006, AWS was launched. In June 2007, over 180,000 customers signed up with AWS. 
In November 2010, Amazon.com retail web services were moved to AWS. In April 2013, AWS started providing certification courses for computer engineers interested in cloud computing. In May 2013, AWS was awarded as an agency authority to function from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services under the Federal Risk and Authorization Management Program. In the first quarter of 2015, their reported sales figure was $1.57 billion and $265 million as the operating income. Founder Jeff Bezos described AWS as one of the fastest growing businesses that might reach $5 billion U.S. dollars, whereas the analysts described the growth of AWS as surprisingly more profitable than the forecast. In April 2015, BBC reported AWS as a profitable organization. Hey, want to become an expert in cloud computing? Then subscribe to Simply Learn's channel and click here to watch more such videos. To nerd up and get certified in cloud computing, click here.